assuming that life miraculously appeared on Earth. Is it possible that single-cell life evolved to become all the complex plants and animals we see today? That was Darwin's idea that everything, every living thing on the earth eventually could be traced back to a common ancestor. The thing that Darwinists believe is that life, that all the species on Earth have, have evolved by a process of spontaneous genetic mutation, that's a spontaneous change in the DNA which is the program for every living thing, coupled with natural selection, the survival of the fittest. The extraordinary thing is that although the theory has been pretty well accepted universally for over a century now, there is absolutely no direct evidence to support it at all. Charles Darwin theorized that given enough time, one kind of animal could evolve into another. This is the basis for the evolutionary tree of life taught in biology. Yet Darwin himself acknowledged the lack of transitional fossils in the rock strata. Darwin wrote, intermediate links, Geology assuredly does not reveal any such finely graduated organic chain, and this perhaps is the most obvious and serious objection which can be urged against the theory. Evolutionists claim that these invertebrates in turn evolved into vertebrates, such as fish. However, over the last 150 years, Scientists have unearthed billions of invertebrate and vertebrate fossils, and they have not found a single transitional form. Now the fact that we have no ancestors for the fishes, the vertebrates, We have no ancestors for the invertebrates. Means that we didn't have any ancestors. And evolution is impossible. A study of the geological record confirms that the major groups of animals each appear abruptly and fully formed. For example, within the insect world, there is enormous variety and complexity. Yet evolutionists offer no conclusive evidence that any of the insects evolved from a common ancestor. The same problem exists for all of the great variety of amphibians, reptiles, and mammals. The evolutionary tree of life has no trunk nor branches. Therefore, all of the implied intermediates are only blind speculation. Sometimes um, Darwinists hold up examples of what they say are transitions. For example, I suppose the, the best known example is Archaeopteryx, which appears to be half dinosaur, half bird. The trouble is, when you look at the dinosaurs that it might have evolved from, what you find is that none of those dinosaurs had a collarbone, and birds all do have a keeled breastbone which holds the pectoral muscles which enables it to flap its wings.
it has been claimed in the past that their archaeopteryx was really nothing more than a feathered reptile. Well, I've never seen a reptile yet that you just stick a bunch of feathers in and kick it in the tail and it flies. And no, archaeopteryx flew. He had wings. And it certainly wasn't a feathered reptile. As a matter of fact, I have an article here before me, published in March 1996 in the Journal of Vertebrate Paleontology. And the authors say this, the avian features of the skull demonstrate that Archaeopteryx is a bird rather than a feathered, non-avian archosaur. The most important missing link of all, of course, is the missing link between an ape-like ancestor and mankind. That's the missing link that most of us are interested in. Have, have we found that? Well, if you listen to Darwinists, you'd think that we found lots of them. In fact, the evidence really isn't there at all. All of the fossils that have been found so far have been classified, reclassified, either as human or as ape. And so far, the missing link is still missing. I have been investigating the so-called missing link between man and ape for many years, and I have found that every single one of them um, simply is no link whatsoever. For example, Australopithecus, the uh, skeleton of Lucy, this really consists only of a 40% skeleton of a not very large ape. and they have not got any evidence that it ever walked upright in any of the bones that they have found of that skeleton. If we analyze the so-called missing links, we find a trail of fraud, deception, and speculation. For example, Nebraska man was reconstructed, family and all, from an extinct pig's tooth. Piltdown man is now universally known to be a deliberate hoax, consisting of an ape's jaw and a human skull doctored to look old. Neanderthals were just plain people. Some of which suffered from arthritis, rickets, or syphilis. Ramapithecus, Gigantopithecus, and Zygantropus were just apes. 